good evening good morning and good afternoon to whichever part of the world you belong to and welcome to this webinar on operation on a career in operations and supply chain management so today we have a stellar panel i think you cannot get it uh, better than this so why are we talking about a supply chain uh, and operations at this point of time if you look at it we are in the midst of a crisis i think something which humanity has never seen so much and everything now boils to supply chain management we cannot really sell more people are spending less uh, of course we can do some amount of marketing but still people are deferring their buying decisions we have less money uh, the employee morale is a little low but we have to survive and if we have to survive this we need to deliver our goods and services so never has been the importance of supply chain management ever emphasized in the history of humanity and of course it was always there but because of this crisis this has actually become very very important because at the end of the day humanity has to survive and for that we need essential goods and commodities and the supply chain is what has been the backbone of stitching it together now when we talk about i just want to get the basics right uh, before i just uh, move to the panelists so essentially if i look about operations operations is when you look at inward in the company but when i talk about supply chain i will not get into a classic definition the definition is whatever it takes to deliver your goods and services to your customer is supply chain and it starts with your customer so today we will talk about how to make a career because if i look at it uh, supply chain was never very very prominent among b school aspirants it's not that they could not they cannot do it but people wanted to do either a marketing or a finance but with this crisis with e-commerce with the ever changing world the importance of supply chain has actually improved increased drastically over the years and if you look at any board today you have a representation from supply chain because this has now gone main stage so to talk about this uh, with about 90 minutes so the way i have structured it is uh, we will talk about 60 minutes and then i will uh, leave it to the audience you can chat uh, you can put in your questions and uh, the panelists will will answer some of these so i have divided into basically five sections so first i will do the introduction part where each of the panelists talk about their journey so you know how they have come to this position next we talk about what kind of skill set because when you go to a b school lot of people come with an aspiration some want to do finance some want to do marketing but of late we have been seeing a lot of interest in supply chain so essentially the panelists will talk about what kind of skill sets and what it takes to actually make a career because all of them are eminent in their fields they have really seen the world and today they are leading some of the top companies in the world next we talk about moving across functions or geographies in fact a lot of people in the b school what they do is they have been into it they want to do an mba want to switch careers so some of the panelists have already done and of course uh, they will talk about how easy or difficult it is to switch extreme switch functions switch geographies switch verticals next we talk about covid because no discussion is complete without because we are in a crisis and it's a new normal so we will hear some perspective about from the panelists about what covid brings to them and then it will be like a trivia where we talk about where the panelists talk about how a typical day looks like what are the kind of books are certifications important and what are the things which they hate or like about the profession or what has been a game changer in their career so with this let me bring up uh, the first panelist uh, ashutosh shrivastav he's from the class of 2008 he's a vice president fulfillment with misho and he has earlier worked with hcl uh, jayprakash associates dalmia cement and javo welcome ashutosh hey sandeep thanks for having me here uh, so next awesome. we have Bhar So welcome Ashutosh and uh, I'm sure the audience will uh, have a lot of insights based on your rich experience across uh, all these companies. So next uh, we have Bharat Karnam from the class of 2011. Uh, he is the head of supply chain and CX at Styli which is a Landmark group again one of those rare individuals uh, 
who has actually grown through the ranks uh, and i'm sure uh, bharat the audience uh, will learn a lot from you so welcome thanks sandeep thanks sandeep uh, glad to be here and just to talk of course bharat will talk about his journey he has uh, earlier worked with asian paints again which is one of the most coveted jobs in campus he has been with mintra and also has been with rivigo uh, next we have jerin raj uh, from the class of 2007 uh, who is the regional manager southeast asia with kc international again jerin is one of those rare individuals who has been in the same uh, company for all these years but the thing is he has been the country head for two countries again it's a very very diverse profile and it's a classic example how how he has moved across functions uh, within the same company so welcome jerin thank you santip glad to be on the panel so next we have sharat uh, loganathan from the class of 2010 so if you are getting your vegetables and fruits it is all because of sharat because he handles the agri supply chain he is a co-founder with ninja card one of the hot start i don't call it a startup because they are beyond that and in fact uh, somebody who has actually looked at the agri supply chain and he has been a co-founder of few more companies in the past and uh, the uh, welcome sharath and i think this is a very very interesting time because uh, you are in the limelight because if we can't get you our vegetables and uh, groceries uh, the humanity will not survive thank you sandeep thank you sandeep for having me here hi guys so then we have shrikant vanchi <laughs> Vanchaswara, who is from the class of 2005, uh, he is the vice president and head of planning, logistics, and commodity oil buying. Again, he handles three functions: he does planning, he does logistics, he does commodity oil buying. Again, one of those rare individuals who has been with the same company uh, after his B school, but he has uh, grown uh, over the years. And uh, just to mention, last year, the Celebrity Magazine actually ranked him as. the top 40 under 40 so if you're to talking about the top 40 supply chain professionals in the country he is one of them so welcome shrikant thanks sandeep thanks to have you uh, so next uh, let's get started so uh, first uh, it's to ashutosh if you can just talk about because you started with hcl you worked with jay prakash associates you worked with dalmia cement then you worked with jabong and now you are the vice president at misho so if you can just talk about your journey Uh, what were your aspirations? How you moved to supply chain, or is it what you wanted to do? Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, hey guys, good to see you all. So, uh, Sandeep, I uh, right after B school, I got placed with HCL Technologies, and uh, while the PGDM course, I was uh, more focused towards getting into some kind of IT marketing or a sales ecosystem, and hence HCL happened. Uh, but while I was working uh, with HCL in the account management or a PD function in the healthcare vertical, I realized this is possibly not uh, my cup of tea. Uh, this is not something which excites me in the real world. Hence, uh, uh, at the same time, I got this opportunity to work with a large conglomerate based out of uh, the northern part of the country called Jay Prakash Associates, and uh, I was working in the I joined in the corporate strategy department where initially. I work on uh, launching uh, or effectively an operations come marketing strategy for the FMCG brand then uh, the next four years which I spent there were completely into hardcore operations and supply chain so uh, my reporting manager asked me to go into the cement business jp at that time was the third largest cement manufacturer in the country and asked me to supply chain ecosystem and practice there so i took it as a, a strategy uh, initiative but once it happened once i got deep into it i realized that possibly this is what uh, excites me and this is what i want to do throughout my career and since then uh, the journey has been across multiple verticals industries but has been into operations and supply chain so at jp i set up uh, the supply chain practice which was managing the uh, manufacturing at the supply of cement through multiple modes to pan india across multiple modes and uh, it was about optimization building up a model to identify all demands and bringing down the cost increasing the hygiene and the efficiency of the ecosystem uh, so i was doing that i was heading a team over there then i moved to dalmia for a year uh, for a stint of approximately a year which was around uh, their uh, seller ecosystem management so seller in a cement ecosystem is largely your wholesalers and retailers slightly similar to your fmcg ecosystem so it was about their ops and management and increasing their overall experience so i did that for around 
in here. And then uh, moved to Japan, uh, which was my first e-commerce stint of operations. I had no clue how e-commerce happened at that point of time. But I uh, had a great team, uh, reporting manager and everybody in the leadership team at Japan was excellent at that time. I was doing a kind of a similar seller experience management at Chabong, having that function. And uh, for, after approximately six months at Chabong, I transitioned into a supply chain, heading the supply chain practice at Chabong, which was completely new for me in the e-commerce ecosystem. I was learning while during the first six months, but uh, getting deep into supply chain and operations uh, was an exciting thing. And I said, OK, this is something which I definitely would want to do. And since then has been e-commerce supply chain for me. I, after integration with Mintra, I was hitting the North India supply chain for both Mintra and Japan. And uh, approximately 15 to 16 months back, I shifted to Bangalore and I've joined Misho. Uh, when I joined, it was kind of in an early startup stage. Now it's a sufficiently large organization. Uh, and I had the complete fulfillment and operations, which includes experience as well as fulfillment piece. Uh, at Misho, uh, it's about you have multiple suppliers, you have around uh, millions and millions of customers, how you are tying in the overall operations network, design the ecosystem, bringing down the costs, in, uh, at the same time having the right speed of delivery with keeping in mind that you have to increase the NPS of the end customer so that they are retained on the platform, they are shopping uh, day in, day out on the platform. That's the overall piece which uh, we intend to solve at Misho and largely where I play important So that's that's more about me, Sandeep. Oh, excellent, Ashutar. I think this is a classic example of somebody who started with IT, but then he realized that this is not what he wanted to do. And uh, yeah. I'm glad actually not everybody, every one of us gets to do, but again, uh, he always found his way because uh, I have yeah. spent a little time with cement. I know one of the, not the best industries to be in, but I think uh, then Javong and I think Misho has been a, a uh, terrific experience for you. Sure. So next, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, next, we move to Bharat again from the class of 2011. Uh, he's heading supply chain and CX again. Two functions that style. It's a landmark group. Uh, he's based in the Middle East. Uh, again, uh, Bharat is somebody. If you look at it, Asian Paints again, one of the best companies in campus. And when we talk about the power of postponement, uh, it's again Asian Paints. So there's a lot of supply chain when we talk about Asian Paints. Uh, similarly. Mintra again, uh, for somebody who went into an only app kind of a buying and uh, a brief stint at Rivigo again, which is uh, into this uh, rest and relay kind of thing. They have actually changed the transportation sector. So uh, Bharat, uh, I just wanted to ask you, so of course you have been in supply chain throughout, but uh, was it like you always wanted to do that or this is uh, what interested me? And if you can share some of your experience at Asian Paint because uh, many of the B school grads actually want to join Asian Paints because, again, that is one of the most coveted companies on uh, campus. So, if you can just uh, talk about your experience, I'm sure the audience will gain a lot from your insights. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks, Anil. So, yeah. So, uh, I uh, during my B school days, right? I think uh, the way I got into supply chain is. Uh, pretty interesting in the sense that I uh, was trying to figure out what to do in my internship, right? I mean, towards the end of first term, I uh, had to sort of make a choice on what field, what company, and what should I target. And I was a fresher from college, so I did not have any prior work ex uh, before I joined K. And through that process, speaking with a bunch of seniors and uh, looking at a sort of profile, what each profile would mean, I broadly sort of whittled, it, whittled on my options to supply chain saying that, hey, you know what? This seems interesting. This uh, seems pretty logical, first principles based, and obviously opportunity to work with a bunch of people and sort of uh, drive or drive improvements and efficiency. Right? That's a sort of basic understanding that I've had. And then I went on to give my uh, interviews and I was part of the summer's process. And uh, Asian Paints happened. I was able to get an offer from Asian Paints. Uh, to intern with them during my summers. And I was given an opportunity to do a project of process improvement in their Patancharu plant, which is a, which is one of their older manufacturing plants uh, on the outskirts of Hyderabad. And uh, there was a proper operation slash manufacturing slash supply chain project. So once I got there, uh, it was a very straightforward application of uh, lean principles, right? It was a textbook example of, you know what, this is the concept you learned. Now go apply this on my software and get in the results, right? That was the brief directive given by the my project guide, who was the 
production senior manager then. So then started uh, trying to apply that, learning a lot of things on the project, what lean entails, what are the various steps in a project, right? It was all on the job. And needless to say, the project team itself, right? My mentor and the project guide, the entire program was well structured, obviously. And the team was also very hands-on and the sort of support I received towards the end of my project, I obviously I learned a lot. I loved that entire experience and also the team, right? Uh, was one case where I felt I could actually learn a lot from their experience and from doing stuff uh, on the shop floor. So that sort of uh, helped me make my uh, mind uh, to pursue a career even after my second year. And then as things would have it, I got a PPO from Asian Pains and I decided to take it up and uh, I joined Asian Pains. So that's been the so, uh, sort of journey that I took to enter supply chain. And I spent about three years in Asian Pains, which was, uh, I think, laid the foundations of what of many things that I learned, right? That I used across my stints, be it in Mintra, be it in Kref, my startup experience, even now uh, as part of my experience in Landmark Group. So one a very important and major takeaway that I can point or attribute to Asian Paints was the entire uh, process governance, right? I mean, uh, how important is it to have laid down processes, document things, and then audit processes? At that time, frankly, when I was in Asian Paints, I found that to be a bit too much. I mean, like, I that was my first job, and I was like, this is getting a little bit too much. I mean, isn't it like following the rules to the T? But then I sort of realized to sort of run a billion dollar, multi billion dollar company uh, and at such an efficiency and such a profitable scale that Asian Pins was doing, this was sort of required. And going after my Asian Pins days, that sort of stuck with me and I always admired that. And in hindsight, right, that became sort of a very fond memory slash learning that I carried forward throughout my uh, journey. So that's uh, a really uh, important piece of takeaway that I had from Asian Pins. Uh, and obviously, during the course of this webinar, I'll talk about more uh, how I sort of implemented or got that done into my various uh, other professional experiences. I think that's a classic example of somebody who was a fresher, so he did not have the baggage of an industry experience. Again, the, that's another side of the story. So, of course, we will uh, talk about it. So, uh, thanks, Bharat. So, next we have Jerin, uh, who has a very interesting profile. He's from the class of 2007, he is a regional manager with Southeast Asia with KC International and uh, RPG Group. And essentially, if I look at it again, one of those rare individuals who has not changed jobs from campus and has grew. In fact, he has headed two country operations. And he is not a hardcore supply chain, but if you look at it, he has been the top man in handling the operation for the entire country. So Jerin, if you can just talk about your journey, uh, uh, how was it an informed decision or what are the kind of uh, hardships that you faced, whether uh, you are happy with what you are doing, if you can just take us through all that. Great, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, prior to K, I was a mechanical engineer at uh, Reliance Industries in uh, petroleum, petrochemical sort of project environments. And I actually really loved that life. Um, and uh, while I was at K, I was fairly sure that I wanted to be in the operation space. And uh, I was also hoping that it, it would be great if it was in infrastructure, but um, infrastructure project management. Uh, but I was anyway prepared to have a supply chain job. Uh, uh, anyway, I was placed with the RPG group uh, with the project management role at KEC. Uh, and I've been with KEC ever since. So KEC International is a EPC contracting firm, uh, primarily in power evacuation infrastructure. Uh, I started my career in KEC with a stint at Ethiopia. Um, and that, that actually was a, a, a that set the uh, stage and foundation for my growth in the company in the sense that it gave me a lot of exposure to the engineering and execution issues of these kind of projects, you know, multicultural, multinational, multinational and cross country sort of projects. And I did roles in coordination, construction, uh, process improvements. And, uh, and then uh, around that time, uh, there was a major breakthrough and uh, the company got, had got a job in the Philippines uh, after a gap of almost 10 years. And uh, I was asked if I would be the PM for the project and I was, I was thrilled to have, take up that profile. And I went to the Philippines with about $3,000 and then we, we built up the organization from scratch, in, uh, the branch uh, from scratch from the business license, licenses, registrations, et cetera. And we actually executed that project well. 
and uh, and because i was the only guy in the re in that region i was also doing marketing business development and tendering uh, for all projects in the southeast asian region so uh, we got a lot of jobs uh, in the philippines in laos indonesia and I, and i also set up offices in those countries in laos and indonesia and uh, after the initial job in the philippines was over i i came back to india Uh, I was on a company-wide business transformation project. We were relooking the entire sort of set of processes uh, uh, for project delivery, and that gave me an exposure to the senior leadership, the kind of thought process that that runs through senior leadership, and the kind of issues that are highlighted at a board level on project performance. And uh, I did that engagement for about two years, and then I moved back. I was mo I moved back to the Philippines uh, this time as country manager, and um, and I delivered a large portfolio of project. It was it was among uh, it was a very uh, challenging two years of my life. Uh, the, the we ha we delivered around fourteen lot projects that were spread all over the Philippines. There are there are around uh, around the uh, there are around three major island groups, and we had projects almost in every. island group it was a very difficult challenge to get to each of these locations um, and from there i moved based to thailand and uh, we've had uh, uh, some uh, good successes at thailand some very high value projects and uh, as of last year uh, i handled the region the uh, southeast asian region uh, we have uh, operations in five countries uh, order book of around 200 250 million dollars and about 450 people uh, that's been my journey so far So excellent, Jerin. So this is again a classic example of somebody who went into a job, things were not working out. He was patient enough, and now, if you look at it, uh, I think sky is also not the limit for him. So uh, next, we move to Sharath again. Right now, the person who is in maximum demand. So if you are get, getting your vegetables and fruits on time, it's only because of Sharath. So Sharath is from the class of 2010, and. Uh, he has already founded two other companies which were in different domain but then a ninja cart happened in 2015 and again somebody from an i am uh, looking into agri supply chain and really making it big and if once we if we look at right now we miss the basics so sharat is actually handling our basics right now so sharat we would like to look at your journey what actually uh, motivated you to start ninja card because agriculture is somebody which somebody who has come for a b school in a b school would not like to go back to and uh, uh, what has been your journey so we would like to hear from you okay thank you first of all thanks for the opportunity and uh, good that i got a got a platform to say things uh, and share things that can be helpful for others so basically i would say uh, that i mean i'm actually kind of uh, intimidated by the kind of profiles and people sitting here how they could choose and step up and do various things uh, uh but for me i was not fortunate enough uh, to kind of choose uh, i think i would be very honest i was not kind of serious with my life till about say till towards the end of imk and uh, at that time 2010 is a time when we were just coming out of the recession of us and the jobs were not so great uh, but i joined imk with uh, with one thing in mind that uh, it is not my cup of tea right so basically after engineering i joined an it firm spent 3 years there uh, i did not really like it and uh, i knew that i should not be i should not be say doing the same mistake again so one thing which i did to join uh, mba was uh, to just get off that job okay and then uh, but recession happened and one thing which happened was uh, a lot of it offers came my way okay i think that was my first turning point where uh, i took a decision not to take up those things and i uh, kind of took up a marketing role uh, with a with a huge pay cut uh, but then i think that was that's the best thing that happened in my life so i didn't choose it i felt bad uh, i really regretted not taking up the large paycheck but then i think uh, that's a starting point where i chose i want to do what i really feel i i feel, feel that i should be doing and marketing operations something that has been interested me and uh, that's where i chose and uh, luckily i got a chance to uh, launch uh three new uh three products in that company uh out of which two were success and still running in that company it's a it's a payment solution uh and this was launched in rural india so i was working with a company called fino payments and it worked closely with uh, uh rural uh, uh rural people and uh, uh kind of it worked with the low income groups so while we launched uh, we launched a microfinance wing and we launched a, a, a what do you call a milk supply uh, related like you know, we could give a 
uh, loan to them based upon the kind of uh, income that they can generate based on the produce that they give. So that kind of uh, thing we did, and I launched it. It, it. it ran well, and that is where I picked up uh, things, and wherein it was nothing. So basically, from there, my zero to one skills uh, kind of improved, and I think that stuck with me till now. And post which, um, uh, so uh, why why startups? Why agree? That's again a long story. After 2010. I, I, th I think most of the credit should go to Thiru, who is another IMK batchman and my co-founder. Uh, I think uh, he he thinks very differently, and I, I kind of admire that in him, and I kind of went along. Uh, and uh, that's how we started a lot of things together. So all the startups that we did prior to Ninja Card also were together. And we have gone through, done the same mistake, learned from it, and eventually ended up doing Ninja Card. And also when we launched Ninja Card, uh, it was not actually your agri supply chain company. So we launched it as a, a B2C uh, company, which will pick uh, from the nearby shops and deliver to customers. So B2C company. But uh, over the period of time, we could see that uh, customers were kind of liking the discounts more than the service we offered. And uh, the value that we generate uh, was not, was, was always questioned. And that is when, uh, and also parallel, we are doing a lot of. Uh, uh, feedback, a lot of feedback calls from the customers, why they used us, what was good in us, what was wrong in us. And then uh, uh, out of 70% of the people always complained that uh, uh, about the quality of vegetables. And uh, that is when we went and checked out to check out, I am picking up vegetables from the customer. Let me understand how does he pick it up uh, from. And uh, that's when we one day went to the market and there was no turning back. And that's how actually Ninja Cart happened. So we could clearly see that we were actually uh, not when I mean, from B2C, we're not actually creating value, but B2B, it's a, it's a problem that nobody has dared to touch. Uh, and we took the bold call to kind of get into it. And luckily, things have fallen in place. And we still believe it's, it's a long, long way to go. Uh, we've just uh, uh, actually not even uh, done a scratch of it. Okay, there's a long, long way to go. It's a lot, it's a huge, huge, it's a 220 to 40 billion market just in India. Uh, we just being in uh, about right now, just in about 40, 50 cities, right? We have not done nothing. So I think I think this is a start. And uh, as the webinar goes, might be uh, I'll cover up a lot of experience that we are having uh, in the supply chain. Uh, I think that would be it from mine as of now. Excellent, Shah. So this is somebody actually who saw a problem and decided to get into it. Of course, a lot of us actually look at the paycheck. It's always a very tough decision for us whether I should forego that. But yes, somebody who actually did that. And today, again, if you again, as I said, if you are getting your fruits and vegetables, it's only because of them. So next, we move to Srikant uh, from the class of 2005. Uh, he's a vice president and head of planning and logistics and commodity oil pricing at Gojej. Again, one of those rare individuals who has grown through the ranks within the same company. And uh, I reiterate, uh, is the top 40 under 40 supply chain professionals in the country. So Shrikant, if you can just walk us through your journey, uh, how, uh, what was your interest, whether it was a conscious decision, and uh, how did you move across uh, the functions within the company? Uh, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, I think uh, uh, this discussion takes me back 17 years uh, to campus uh, 2003. Uh, and I think uh, when I was in college, I was a fresher, uh, didn't have uh, much knowledge of business. Uh, what actually decided uh, my interest was the grades in the first term. So I got an A plus uh, in operations management and marketing management. I thought that's my cup of tea, the others are not. So uh, that's, I think, where it started as an interest. Uh, but I think uh, we've got great faculty uh, uh, in, in uh, supply chain, uh, in IMK right from then. Uh, we had good faculty in marketing as well, but I think that's where the interest started building and I did a summers uh, in operations. Uh, I got placed with uh, Godrej Industries uh, in 2005. Uh, it was a very exciting job uh, because I was a passionate chemical engineer. Uh, I, I, I thought I was an engineer more than an MBA when I joined that job. Uh, and the business was a chemicals business. so. Or like the best place to be in chemicals marketing. I have a marketing MBA and a chemical engineering. Nothing better can happen. So it's actually a great job that I was in. Uh, uh, we were selling B2B chemicals. It was fun. Uh, and, and a lot of our friends were saying that if you want to be a CEO, 
better be in sales and marketing. Supply chains don't create uh, CEOs. Uh, only the sales and marketing teams typically generate CEOs for you. Uh, I think I, I, I like that idea and uh, was chasing that for some time. Uh, but I think opportunity is what create career over a period of time. So uh, within three years, I had a great opportunity on business transformation uh, in the same business, uh, which was business transformation in the supply chain uh, side. Uh, and the chemicals business was very much a supply chain operations kind of business where we buy commodity, make chemicals out of it and sell it. So uh, the supply is a very important, so it's very similar to commodity uh, sales. So we convert commodity into a product and sell. So supply chain was equally critical uh, in that business. So it was a very easy switch from sale to supply. Uh, and I thought it was the same. So when I switched, I actually felt there was no change at all. It, it was almost just seeing the business from two different sides. Uh, after that, I had an opportunity with the FMCG business of the Godrej Group. Uh, and again, uh, something that I saw was faster growing than the business that I was in at that point of time. I did a quick switch into that. Uh, then a few role changes here and there, done multiple roles in supply chain. In fact, uh, the old oil uh, commodity buying that I was doing in chemicals business actually gave me this uh, additional responsibility of commodity buying even in the uh, FMCG business that I do right now. So I think uh, what we chase uh, is, is a set of uh, dreams. So one is where do you want to be and how do you want to go? The other piece is about um, you know things fitting into place one at a time uh, over a period of time where you see it, it kind of matching with your interests, uh, uh, your growth uh, perspectives. Uh, and it really works. So Godrej Group has been great to me. Uh, and I think uh, that's probably the reason I uh, spent 15 years. Uh, this year would be a long service award again. Uh, so yeah, that's broadly how it is. I think uh, that's uh, really uh, pretty heartening to uh, hear that. In fact, if you look at it, Mr. Rakesh uh, Sinha, again, I think uh, you must have interacted with him. Again, one of the stalwarts uh, has spent all his career in Godrej. And I think uh, he has done really Somebody who has moved into a replenishment-based uh, fulfillment, that is, I think, uh, he has really done uh, sure. really well. So with this, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so next, we move to the next section. Again, this is of much interest to any aspiring B-School uh, grad, which is uh, all about the skill set. Now, here is an IM which is more known for marketing, finance. Why are we talking about supply chain? If you look at it, this crisis has again reiterated how critical, how mainstream supply chain is. Now, I am Koikod has an institution. Uh, in fact, if you look at it, many of the I am grads 20 years ago, they never wanted to do operations or supply chain because they did not find it interesting enough. But if you look at it, the kind of dynamism, the kind of if you uh, the things which have changed. I take a classic example uh, in the 1980s. If you wanted to buy a Bajaj scooter, there was an 18 month waiting period. But today what has happened is the consumer wants it instantaneously. So essentially what has changed is the customer tolerance time has reduced drastically. So essentially that's why if you look at the dynamism that has actually uh, now too much in this function. Now from I am Koikot perspective, if you look at it, it has always had an excellent faculty in operations. Uh, they had a Omega, which is the operations uh, club. There was some life. In fact, our batch was very lucky that uh, we got a project from Milma where we designed the uh, uh, transportation uh, solution for them. So essentially, but only thing is it was never in the limelight because people never thought about the because again, when it comes to supply chain, people uh, chose different institutes, not because an IAM cannot do it, but I am never really had an interest. But with the world which has changed over the years, I think it has become very, very important. And uh, if you look at a typical IAM batch, 90s, 98% engineers, but with more diversity, uh, with more girls coming into the picture, the world around has changed, the supply chain around has changed. So we need a, a population which is more diverse in nature if we have to solve today's problem. So with this, I will uh, move to Ashutosh. Uh, if you look at it for any school uh, aspirant, of, of course, today's youth are much informed than us because if you look at the Darwin's theory, it's a theory of evolution. They are smarter than us because they have evolved. So they are definitely more knowledgeable than us. 
but having said that if somebody wants because most of us actually never uh, did a conscious choice of choosing supply chain as a career it happened and then we started liking it but what is your advice to any b school grad who wants to uh, have a career in operation what kind of skills that he should focus on and what kind of things he should do on campus sure sadeep uh, so lastly uh, what i can vouch for is that for me specifically and i am sure all the panelists supply chain and operations is what clicked for us and uh, is i can vouch it's the most exciting space to work in because this is one space where you uh, when you encompass the complete journey of any product or its life cycle you create an impact through operations and supply chain in each specific phase of it right so that's that's why uh, you get the touch and feel of it you are part of the action at all point of time which is very very exciting now for any uh, individual who is aspiring to be part of this whole exciting ecosystem uh, the couple of things which i sure is extremely important one is don't come with any preconceived notions when you enter into this ecosystem it could be operations on the sell side buy side or any particular industry right uh, you should definitely have uh, an excitement to learn and understand each and every cog in the overall wheel of supply chain so you need to understand the complete process in detail and not be satisfied till you can chart it out on a piece of paper that this is the step by step process which is there in the operations of my industry my company in my scope of things so that internal lack to have that is extremely important second uh, aspect is because across all industries and multiple uh, aspects in the supply there's a lot of data which gets generated so it's important you need to have a analytical bent of thought process so something which will definitely help you is to have your basic excel and sql uh, script writing skills to be in place that that will definitely help you a lot so everybody should definitely have that if you are aspiring to get into operations uh, so so that you are able to build multiple dashboards multiple reports and you are able to because it's a real time action which happens in operations it's important that nothing goes miss uh, and you're tracking for your respective function whatever sphere of uh, control you have each and every particular aspect hence it's important to have that analytical bent of thought process to get into it and monitor and take into control the overall scheme of things so that's my piece of advice to anybody who has passed to get into uh, operations supply chain so thanks ashutosh so essentially the analytical uh, bent of mind and the interest which actually drives some of these decisions now yeah. bharat uh, you came uh, you were a fresher so you did not have the baggage of what to choose from so you had a open field so what exactly you did uh, you think a b school grad should do something different in campus uh, because everybody of, of us has goes to the same courses but what is something you think is essential for any b school grad to have the edge uh, to actually make a career in this field sure uh, sure sandeep so um, i think uh, at this when i made the transition from asian paint i mean i had sort of taken a career break and i wanted to get into e-commerce because i was excited with that entire field and i knew that that is the next big thing in india right i mean i had a very strong feeling and i was extremely interested to get into that and once i made that switch uh, from asian paint to mintra and then to a startup called inkra which basically is a pro fulfillment product company that i was part of and then obviously on to styly which i am a part of which is the uh native e-commerce business of uh, landmark group one constant thread across this entire journey has been the percolation of digital products across multiple aspects of the supply chain of any organization right i mean there are multiple uh, you can start from the imports right when i'm buy my merchandise there are a bunch of activities that need that needs to be or can be or right now in many companies in many startups be it meesho or be it mintra be it any of the big e-commerce are already digitized uh, from there to fulfillment and last mile deliveries this entire journey as uh, even ashutosh was mentioning earlier there is a lot of data that's flowing through and to manage and to sort of consume all this data and give insights there is a a uh, layer of tech that is built through this entire network so uh, what i personally found i mean what i did during my campus days was uh, i was part of uh, iisc industry interactions and it's still there and we used to sort of facilitate live projects on campus right 
so that was a really uh, interesting uh, 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 interesting uh, segue into sort of getting to know a particular problem in a particular company and solving it with your skill sets and sort of researching and building your own knowledge on top of that so right now with so many digital products encompassing multiple facets of supply chain i would strongly encourage uh, any b schooler or even aspiring b schooler to sort of use this opportunity which i think is i mean there is still a lot of potential left in it right i mean during your course along with your coursework on campus you can pick out a few live projects get a understanding of a specific problem right now with so many of us alums here i'm sure there will be no dearth of live projects for students on campus and figure out ways to improve or solve that problem using data using whatever digital tools that you have or you can sort of uh, glean from the uh, internet right i mean uh, even over the last 5 6 years i think the internet has become a far more uh, inclusive world for us to sort of learn anything from 0 to 1 so i have also seen that in my career where uh, it's obviously the network that you build but also there's so much information available out there that helps us solve any problem so i believe that a live project is a very uh, crucial but right now uh, not fully utilized uh, platform for specifically students of k right our campus so excellent so essentially the emphasis on more practical of course theory is important but we practical is, is equally important so jaren if you look at it again uh, you have a profile on operations and uh, project management essentially what happens is typically uh, of course b school we grow through some subjects but once we are out of a b school we actually stop studying so what are your views for any b school grad maybe somebody who is one years two years in the industry so what kind of reading or uh, what kind of things he should do because the supply chain is in fact operations management as a profession is changing every minute so what do you think uh, uh, somebody who is one year two years uh, out of campus he should do so that uh, he doesn't really uh, is always abreast of the latest happenings uh, about this about this profession okay so uh, uh, to begin with i think uh, to be in this field you you need to uh, you need to have a genuine interest towards uh, dealing with um, uh, uh, making sense of data and kind of uh, uh, consolidating it so that you can you can make uh, intelligent decisions based on that and i also here i wanted to just draw uh, Uh, sort of a, a distinction between uh, uh, supply chain and the rest of operations and and project management so uh, within within the project management space a, a, a good a good startup a good uh, way for a for a fresh fresh person to start off is to do one some of the certifications like for example pmp or prince 2 uh, these kind these kind of certifications give a very structured way of thinking about uh, about project management very specifically and i think there are as many courses as well for uh, uh, in, in op- supply chain and operations management in uh, in general like L- lssb etc and uh, the intention should be not uh, in terms of securing the certification but in terms of the whole process of having gone through uh, to study for it uh, i think i i really enjoyed the time i spent on uh, on preparing for my pmp within the first 2 3 years of uh, you know uh, being in this job profile so that's basically it so uh, thanks jerry so let's move to sharath again before i move to sharath if you look at it maybe you were seeing the same uh, boring phrases so we decided to shuffle it so you can now see it a, a different orientation so so sharath again uh, you started this agri supply chain again none of us have any clue on what agriculture is so what extra effort did you because if we talk about agriculture i can think about oh it's so easy you just plant uh, seeds and then it grows up and then so what what actually you did to actually know about this so that you could address some of these uh, and even for a typical b school grad who wants maybe to start something on some of these areas so what are what is your advice uh, to them that how should they go about it okay so uh, the question actually would uh, tingle me to like tell a lot of things so i'll try to kind of narrow down and tell things which will really matter okay so uh, uh, i'll just uh, divide your prop this statement into two two statements okay one uh, what extra things that we did to kind of address the issues in the in the supply chain or operations that we encountered in the startup uh, second is uh, what things uh, that would be better for in imk uh, or the people in imk the students at k campus to kind of do so that they can be prepared okay 
So let's go. My first question is that um, absolutely no idea what to do when we launched. And so basically, the attitude of problem solving, it's majorly uh, we had to do. Uh, we we were seeing a problem that was given to us. Uh, Seventy percent of our customers were not happy, and we knew that we had to fix the quality of the vegetables that is being picked from the customer. And for that, we had to go and check out how uh, they are actually buying from the farmer. Okay, so when we talk about agriculture, right? So any city, let's talk about there's there's a there's a whole uh, farm to uh, plate kind of the whole chain is there. But then now it, it can be divided majorly into two. Uh, let's say from farm to your uh, city, and from city the how it reaches uh, to your uh, now nearby shops, and that by from that your plates. Okay, from farm to city is uh, uh, predominantly where a lot of things happens. Okay, and uh, uh, not all vegetables. So actually, we focused on vegetables, fresh vegetables. Uh, it, it, the geography matters. The prices are different at different areas, and it depends. The, the price changes throughout the day. It is benchmarked against different markets. So as and when we ventured and we figured out newer problems, and we had to put a system in place to kind of figure out what will work for us. And uh, and majorly, majorly to uh, the the learning that I would say, or the preparation that any guy in a campus should do, uh, is that uh, definitely whatever uh, Ashutosh and Bharat said, you know, definitely analytical uh, way of thought process is uh, definitely required because uh, you see so much on a day that if you don't uh, take those things in the night, or let's say take a backup of it and see what exactly happened, these numbers are the way which will just actually give you an idea of what exactly happened. As simple as what time the truck left, how much time it traveled, what time it came here, what was sent, how much we got, was it right? So you know, basically, as a, a, in in a way, we kind of uh, have to see through the data to understand what happened because you might be doing a lot of things throughout the day, but then these numbers actually give you the picture of what happened and where we have lost and what we should do the next day uh, so that it does not affect our business. And especially in fresh supply chain, uh, you cannot uh, wait longer because when you know today I made a mistake and that has costed me uh, an X amount of money, I know that if I don't fix it tomorrow, uh, it's a 24 hours, what do you call it? It's a, a 24 hour perishable uh, product, right? So I'll have to be faster. So it, 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 it is not something that I cannot, I can take some time and then think and then do it. If you see a problem, we have to act, act fast on it. And that's how we kind of do a lot of incremental changes and uh, really think back when that incremental changes will not work, then come back with a new model which will work for you. So especially in, in our, uh, I would say that uh, definitely uh, we are able to do, like you know, we move about, say, uh, 1,300, 1,400 tons of vegetables across India every day, right? And that is only possible because we uh, look through uh, live data. Uh, we, uh, we, we plan uh, in advance. We see what is happening uh, without which definitely and uh, the supply chain cannot be done. And as uh, correctly as Jiren uh, sir said, uh, that uh, there's a lot of difference between supply chain and operations. Okay, every business will have an operations, and uh, and supply chain uh, is a kind of will be uh, will will matter to few companies and will not. Okay, uh, a lot of companies which, uh, for for them it's operations oriented. Even that includes a lot of back end work. And operation is what decides what kind of service that you offer, what kind of competitiveness you can uh, be in 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 the, in the business. So definitely, uh, uh, the idea of trying to understand a lot of uh, things based upon numbers is very much important. Uh, and and secondly, I would say that uh, uh, I I would ag not agree with Bharat uh, on live projects because it's kind of overrated. Uh, because uh, I don't think somehow the companies don't take it uh, don't take it seriously. And uh, and and uh, or, or the students don't take it seriously, or it is not something done. I would say that uh, pick up something uh, in your in your in your apartment or within your community, uh, or take up something within a college uh, in which you need to improve. Okay, that gives you a on hand feel of if you can able to improve. And if there is a company which is very serious about the live project, which will implement you, which will take the business risk of implementing your ideas and doing your changes, then definitely that is something that you should try it out. Okay, uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, businesses don't want to risk uh, uh, something uh, with a, a student studying in the college. So I would say that there will be a lot of people who would want some free solutions. You have a as simple as you're living in an apartment. There's a problem which they manage. Uh, the postals or they manage the kind of finances within the apartment. Why not make a system for it? Why not try to improve it? Okay, 
an hands on thing would actually help you what anything which you do in the back end to give a better service which can improve efficiency is something that is operationalness and a larger thing with which it it is when a goods is flowing through a lot of network and you have to make uh, it reach from point a to point b in the right time at the right place so that you're still competitive and still make money in it it is a supply chain right and 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 it's very interesting and especially being in fresh uh it's day in day out uh, we kind of uh, work 24 cross 7 anything is anything is moving in ninja cart at any point of day uh, so definitely if i don't look at the numbers i don't get an idea so I, i think a lot of number crunching you should be passionate about number crunching you should be passionate to understand get the, get a story of what uh, the thing has happened and been able to uh, insightfully ask because you should not get lost in numbers again you should be able to derive the key points and prioritize and question the key things which will uh be able to kind of help you uh, better the uh, operations the next day okay excellent sharath actually uh, when you spoke about live projects it reminds me of our days actually we are from the fifth batch and uh, we were the first batch to get into the new campus so we were in the new campus for three months and in the old nit calicut what happened is the mess was somewhere the classrooms were somewhere the computer center was somewhere so we really had to stitch it everything so if you look at it we were actually doing operations management from day one on campus so again we were very lucky to be a part of the journey so uh, moving to shrikant again shrikant you started as a chemical engineer then uh, typically if i look at it godrej uh, pre- people usually prefer a sales kind of a role but you slowly transition to a supply chain role so essentially uh, for a b school grad again uh, Godrej again uh, it's uh, definitely known both for market and supply chain so what extra uh, they need to put in fact if you look at it Godrej was the pioneer is getting into a, a demand driven uh, supply chain so essentially the way that concepts are changing because uh, to be very honest academics uh, is not able is not exactly in line with industry because typically industry is a little uh, notch ahead of that so for any b school grad how do you think that they should be able to catch up with the latest trend and how important is technology uh, because typically when a b school grad comes in uh, he actually shies away from the it courses because that's what i did and i felt that it was a mistake so how important is technology uh, in today's supply chain and what should a b school grad do uh, to bridge this gap sure uh, so i think uh, we we just heard from all of us here that supply chain requires a lot of data crunching uh, understanding uh, how the consumer is wanting a particular piece uh, and also a lot of analytical uh, uh, information that needs to go in and technology actually has been uh, kind of a backbone to service uh, most of most of uh, what is required over here uh, and in fact uh, in supply chain as we see uh, you obviously can have uh, you know lines of uh, functional leadership or, or say of expert leadership so uh, if there is a clear liking uh, to say a technology element uh, which kind of helps you optimize better uh, tries to get you uh, into prioritizing better uh, you have a lot of uh, you know tools which kind of uh, can be inbuilt developed excel is the easiest piece to do it uh, but we have people uh, using a lot of other tools right now Uh, and there are certification courses that are available which you know kind of help you build this optimization uh, process which is extremely critical so we play a very tight line between uh, service level and cost uh, and at every point of time we we in supply chain you know kind of uh, force ourselves to believe cost uh, and we are a cost center at, at to start with uh, it is very critical but as as things are progressing uh, service is getting a greater priority uh, and and this optimization function is about building uh, how do i get better service uh, at the same cost so our uh, technology is definitely helping us get through this data uh, far better uh, it obviously also be- depends on on where your passion lies so uh, uh, coming out of college you might have passion say uh, in say a, a piece around machine so a lot of us are engineers uh, we love the optimization that goes around in factories uh, in projects and it's real fun so manufacturing is a very big element of supply chain uh, uh and core manufacturing is as exciting uh, as say a, a planning or a logistics uh, or a procurement function uh, a core negotiation piece so sourcing to restructure your product restructure deals 
uh, restructure, uh, you know, uh, uh, periods uh, and other small pieces of times uh, really is very useful. So you have certification courses which go around these elements of sourcing. There are elements that go around manufacturing. And obviously there are pieces that go under things like uh, DDMRP that we speak about, demand-driven uh, MRP, TOCs, uh, which kind of help us service the customer better. So I think uh, it's about making those right choices as to what you want to do with technology. Uh, if it's about getting um, a, a right feel of what's happening in the organization, uh, like Sharad mentioned, understand, understanding the story uh, behind and kind of using the data to build that story. Uh, it's important that you use technology to do that. If it's about building your own skill set, so if it's about uh, building a strong negotiation skill set or say a, a, a great manufacturing skill set, it's a completely different set of technology that you would want to uh, kind of look at. So uh, multiple options and supply chain for me is very wide. Uh, while we said operations is what is there in almost all organizations, uh, manufacturing, sourcing, uh, logistics, warehousing, customer service, e-com. I think all of it right now is customer facing and it, it's as much uh, uh, an important function to an organization like marketing and sales is. Okay, excellent. So essentially a lot of uh, practical advice for the B school grad. So essentially we covered uh, all your journey. We covered about the kind of skill set needed uh, if people want to excel in this field. So next, we move to the third section. We, we talk about moving across functions, moving across geographies, moving across industries. So we start with you, Ashutosh. You have worked uh, with three, four companies all in uh, different fields. So how easy or difficult it is for a B-School? Because a lot of us come with a mindset, oh, I have been doing technology. I want to move to marketing after a B-School, uh, two years in B-School, which may or may not happen. Uh, similarly, once we have a dream job on campus, which may not happen. So people uh, tend to get a little jittery and may want to switch careers. So what do you think? How should a B-School grad uh, go about it? Uh, so Sandeep, it's about being really, uh, at least during the initial days, when you are at the B-School or you're a fresh graduate, uh, don't build any uh, preconceived notions is what I'll again mention. Uh, be really open. Uh, Attempted multiple things during your internships, as Bharat mentioned about possibly attempt to do some live projects also across multiple sectors, across multiple functions and identify what exactly clicks for you. And if you're sure that this clicks, then effectively build your career around that. And that, that's the way you will excel also because you'll get more satisfaction in this particular role. And if we look at uh, shifting across specifically, specifically in the supply chain ecosystem, if we talk about across shifting from one particular sector to another. So I've done that. I was with the manufacturing ecosystem, then moved to e-commerce, right? The basics remain largely the same. As Shrikant was mentioning, it is about how focused you are towards solving the problem for your customers in any ecosystem. And hence your basics of uh, the hygiene aspects, whatever you're promising to your customer, whether it's an FMCG ecosystem, it's a chemical ecosystem or any commerce you need to adhere with those promises. It's about the speed of reach from multiple locations within the world, manufacturing across the country, how closely and fast you are able to reach out to your customer. All these things are core to supply chain. At the same time, because we are part of the, in most of the ecosystem, we are a significant cost in the ecosystem, right? Hence, it's a, always a factor of reducing the cost, optimizing on that. So these core aspects always remain the same. So it's not difficult to shift from one particular sector to another. If your basics are right, all these focus areas are sorted. I don't think it's a big challenge to move from one industry to another. There are certain things which you have to unlearn once you move in from one industry to other and new stuff which you have to learn and effectively uh, adhere with those principles and move ahead. So essentially fundamentals don't change. You just need to uh, tweak it based on the nature of the industry. So Jareen, again, uh, it's a very, uh, of course, you have been with the same company, but you have worked across multiple countries. So as a B-School grad, if suppose I maybe have to move to Philippines or a Singapore or a Thailand or a Middle East. So what exactly uh, is the preparation needed if I have to really excel in those uh, kind of a country? 
Okay, so at least as far as the uh, Southeast Asia is concerned, uh, and and prob probably all uh, all across as well, there's a, there's a high level of uh, cultural sensitivity that you need to have, uh, especially in 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 uh, Southeast Asia, um, and and uh, a, a respect for their way of doing things, uh, being a little bit soft spoken. Uh, and then, uh, uh, and uh, also recognize that uh, all of the uh, um, all all of the branding that you may eff effectively carry does not make a lot of uh, may not make a lot of sense here. Like you know, uh, they might not all know of IMs, etc. So uh, be be prepared uh, uh, and and be culturally sensitive. I think that should that that will help you ease into the scheme uh, here. It's a it's a very nice region. Uh, very uh, uh, the people here are you know uh, uh, very accommodative uh, and and um, it's it's a very nice culture uh, overall so at least as far as southeast asia is concerned okay uh, so bharat we move to you uh, i have a slightly different question typically what happens again asian paints one of the most uh, coveted companies on campus so what happens is you start liking the company it really becomes very difficult to uh, move because if you want to have a uh, different offer maybe it's high paying or low paying so what is your uh, take like it was it must have been a little difficult for you to leave asian paints and join uh, maybe a not a such a reputed company or you may have to take a pay cut so what is your advice what should a b school grad how should a b school grad look at it it's a not a sort not a reputed company uh, should he or she go ahead Maybe the pay is less, but the job is very exciting. So, what should what is your advice to a B school grad? How should he or she approach it? Yeah, yeah, um, sure, Sandeep. So, um, so uh, it's frank, frankly, and to probably answer in a single line, right? It's really very subjective. I mean, I'm sure everyone understands that, right? So, if I have to speak about myself, then um, during my days in Asian Paints, probably the initial couple of years. Uh, I wasn't sure or I wasn't really clear on what is the next thing that I would like to do, right? And towards the end of my second year and the last year, the third year, I was pretty clear and I sort of got excited about this entire e-commerce industry and I wanted to jump. So um, I took a break, I did that. And from then on, it's been always about, I have this personal uh, interest about what's latest, what's happening uh, right now in the industry. And I would want to be associated in some way to that, right? Uh, so that's been my sort of a journey. So even after Mintra, I had uh, a two-year stint with Incref. It's uh, where I was the founding team member of. It's a fulfillment tech product. Uh, major clients like all the e-commerce giants like uh, Misho, Mintra, etc. And uh, it gives them fulfillment solutions. So that example, I think, is relevant to the question that you asked, wherein uh, what do you do if you have to sort of take a pay cut, move into a new industry, a new company, or a new sector, right? Um, so in the initial uh, few years of your career, right, uh, I believe that grounding yourself with the proper fundamentals, with the proper best practices, right, I think is very important. Once you have the fundamentals in place, I think you can sort of take a bet or uh, take a bet on what is the next uh, play that you want to do, right? And also, I would strongly suggest that there should be some sort of a time limit with clear objectives about what is it that I would gain from this experience of mine. Because there are two ways it can go, right? I mean, it can either be like uh, you start a really young startup team, like say Ninja Cart, and you really make these millions of dollars, right? Because of the crazy valuations that they have right now. Or not everyone is maybe uh, the right place at the right time with the right team. You may sort of even make a decision and figure out, hey, you know what? This sort of bet is not really playing it well. Right. Then I have to be clear about what is the one, two, three things that I want to gain. It could be skill sets. It could be some sort of a, a experience. It could be networking. It could be some monetary uh, value that you foresee after a four year or five year time period. But be clear about that. Once it's not happening or happening, then could we cut your losses, make a move next so that you don't sabotage or damage your career greatly. That's what I would believe and that's what uh, I would suggest to anyone else. So obviously, be, I mean, it's very important that we take the right bets. But if the bets don't pay off, please cut your losses, be realistic about it, and move on with your career. So don't get overly attached to it. Excellent, Bharat. So Shrikan, moving it to you, you have been with the same company, but you have worked in sales, you have worked in procurement, you have worked in logistics, you have worked in commodity buying. Now, typically in a company, what happens is if you are very good at your work, it's very difficult to change functions. 
so how easy or difficult it is for anybody within the same company to move functions because of course sometimes it so happens uh, we don't uh, emphasize on that there are ego between two functions and uh, you may fall in the middle so what is your advice if somebody wants to say he has been to sales but he understand maybe purchasing is what his cup of tea is how how should he go about it changing functions within a company so i think uh, uh, sandeep the ego bit is great uh, so that actually is something that should be on the back of your mind that tomorrow you might be doing uh, the other side of the table so as long as you have that in your mind i'm sure you will be able to course through it uh, but on a serious note uh, when we uh, move through functions uh, there are two players or two people who get affected one is yourself uh, which is basically whether are you building value for yourself are you building employability for yourself are you creating a, a good learning for yourself and th- and that's the single piece that you would want to keep answering as you keep changing uh, roles to uh, are you able to build value for the organization as you move so what what i have seen or realized through multiple roles is the moment you hit a three year uh, kind of a period and you move into the fourth year you actually done a lot of things that you feel are good and you unless you make space for somebody else to kind of get his thoughts get his things right you're actually not doing anything significantly different so even for the organization i believe it's it's value that you keep moving across in roles uh, but on the ease of movement i think it's about always realizing that this is not the whole piece what do i get from this role what do i learn how do i create value for myself and how do i make myself more employable is a question that uh, you keep uh, answer asking yourself and if if you believe that there is a continuous uh, increase in value in terms of what you learn the way you manage your teams people interactions uh, it, it's actually not too difficult to move across roles uh, there's obviously got to be an organization's interest to it as well you can't choose to do it if the organization is not willing to do it so uh, that's the second piece but if the organization is willing to do it uh, you must look at doing multiple roles it definitely builds multi perspectives and makes you a very well shaped person the only exception i believe is for people who believe in expert leadership so who believe that there's something that that's that they are too passionate about so there's something that they are too passionate about in operation strategy so how do i build the future of the supply chain for the organization or if you are too passionate about say a sourcing a uh, piece you might want to stick on to that and the longer you kind of curate yourself and i believe commodity buying is one of it so the the more the number of ups and downs you see the greater is your ability to perform in that role so there are some roles where you would want to stick on and these changes are disruptive for the organization so uh, i think sourcing or commodity buying clearly requires you to build a period of ex- uh, expertise but the other general management roles don't really require you to spend a lot of time and it's very easy to move from one role to another essentially the organization intent is again one of the factors uh... to be taken into account now sharat again uh, what happened is again you founded two companies in the past and again you decided to go ahead with ninja card now typically what we have seen in b school grad people look for a job a very stable career but if somebody wants to take that kind of risk of course there is always the b school fees are uh, quite high these days so essentially uh, a lot of things which go in a grad's mind like whether how do i pay it off and uh, whether i should actually go and uh, do something whether i should join a startup so what is your uh, uh, how do you think people should uh, go about it okay so it's a very tough question <laughs> there's no right answers for it uh, <clears throat> if somebody wants to do uh, a startup and if they are joining a b school for it then i think they are wasting time they should uh, drop out and start up today because what i strongly believe is that uh, if you want to start up you don't don't need uh, because you know whatever you can save that money and put into your startup and grow the startup so i would not say that uh, two year two years and then do a startup because it is not uh, what you what will not what you guys will miss is not the money that you spent on this education you would you would have spent two years uh, thinking about your idea and might be a relevant idea is already there and it is already picked up and they are far ahead than what you are already today 
so uh, definitely for a for a guy who wants to start up i think uh, risk taking uh, is something that uh, should come to them they should not think about um, and i do not know uh, i somehow feel if you think about a lot of there is no calculative risk when it comes to startup you just go all in uh, now it's 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 just all in uh, you cannot have, as far as i am concerned i can be wrong uh, you guys can take my uh, opinion with a pinch of salt but as far as i am concerned i think there is all there's just one thing all in and if it doesn't work you go rock bottom and then try to start again so uh, uh, it it it's uh, our experience has been like you no know, it's because uh, I, i did not start the first startup thinking that it will be a failure and i will end up doing ninja card when i did that was my dream we wanted to do that uh, we hit rock bottom uh, again we started with something else uh, it didn't fly through and uh, this uh, and definitely as a person um, uh, there that is something which actually keeps on bugging you to do something and uh, and even if you are doing uh, i would not say that i didn't do justice to the job at that point of time when i was doing i was doing it but then at the back of mind you still have this thing going on that there could be something that could do much more better something for yourself right uh, and especially a lot of guys can relate if you know uh, especially in i don't know i do i do i can be the black sheep here sorry guys but the point is that whenever i am doing a job i feel like if i can work for 17 hours 18 hours for other company why not work for myself and you know do it you now basically i am more greedy than you right so uh, uh, so that is what is something that uh, do, there is there is no there is no formula for starting up if you guys feel there's an idea which i should work on today i think you guys should start working on now but then well, if you have jo- you guys have already joined and if you are looking at an mba as an experience i would say that uh, uh, my uh, two piece of advice would be that uh, what i felt is that when we finished imk and went to the real world right uh, what i would feel was i was bookish Uh, uh a lot of things that we learned were not uh, up to the date a lot of things were not relevant a lot of things uh, were not what the current uh, industries or current uh, uh, companies wanted uh, and that is where you had the lag and a person who was kind of keeping in touch with the current affairs a uh, guys who were kind of reading it what is required now uh, what if let's say if, if it's your operations what is operations what is what do you think is right now the operations just narrow down like you know you can you need not, you need not cover the whole global supply chain right you can just pick one company you can just pick one thing narrow it down and try to understand to loyal and that will give you much more understanding even if you join join a relevant job because uh, you would have learned something substantial uh, even say if let's say marketing finance right i think uh, uh, my advice would be to kind of uh, be uh, uh, learn a lot about what is happening in uh, the current structures and trying to learn what Uh, is uh, is happening uh, in the current industry space right and that's why i would say you already i mean the, the company uh, what do you call imk actually has his internship program but i would say that uh, try to do more internship uh, try to uh, a small small stint wherever possible try to do work uh, take up some take up some weekend works uh, do something which will give you a on hand ki what is exactly required what problem you are solving it does it really even help and that will actually give you a an hands on experience and that would actually improve and uh, a lot of questions i saw in the live channel asking for what are the courses and this thing that is you, you can have courses there's a lot of operation courses that you can study upon but then you know it once you join a company then that company would want you to specialize in something else right so i would say that uh, you should uh, as ashish was rightly pointed you should be with an open mind uh, join a company be there and as bharat correctly said right something might work for you something might not so you should all be quickly evaluating whether uh, am i becoming a better person am i solving something am i adding value uh, am i being happy doing this work so that and what, what is what is it i'm leading i think that would be that constant questioning yourself should be uh, able to put yourself in the right path okay excellent so before no no that's fine because it's more practical advice because a lot of people really debate that a b school grad will uh, Uh, two years will change my course such a way that i can go and start any company but as sharad rightly said that maybe after two years that idea somebody must have actually taken it up it's already gone so essentially there's no point in really waiting for that so again before i open it up for the audience i will just ask one question to each of us so uh, first i will take up shrikant again uh, this covid 19 i think uh, the sector which you are in of course the fmcg has been hit but the white goods sector has been uh, hit uh, quite drastically so what do you think what is going to be uh, uh, coming in the next uh, few months and as a b school grad uh, uh, what he or she should be prepared uh, when he takes up a new role in a similar uh, company so i can speak for the fmcg piece uh, we are actually in a lucky space uh, in this covid environment uh, 
the demand has been uh, fairly good so we have a lot of health and wellness product as well uh, so uh, i think clearly uh, we will see demand tapering off uh, there are a lot of jobs uh, that are gone uh, there is an issue of migration that we face as well so supply chain is is about operations it's about getting work done out of people as well uh, so we really believe that there is a serious problem that's coming our way because of people availability being low uh, and also income levels dropping with both uh, urban and rural uh, incomes dropping we might see uh, definitely stifled growth over a period of time uh, which means uh, we're looking at about 12 months of almost no growth after this period of time but what it gives as an opportunity for supply chain is uh, and uh, modi also spoke about in his, in his speech supply chain uh, was used a couple of times and all, all of us were going gungo about it so uh, what what it actually makes supply chain today uh, is that it's really become a business function uh, uh, very rarely had we seen what is the value of goods that we've kept available for sales so uh, for the last two months i have actually been measuring the value available for sales it was always quantity in the past growths were always quantity uh, the cases that we produced and stuff at this point of time we're looking at value that we can give for sale uh, uh, and and what we give gives us competitive advantage so if there is one factory in a in a in a containment zone the other competition is not in a containment zone you suddenly feel the market shares change for that particular business so under covid environment it's about how agile you are how quickly are we able to change our vendors how quickly are we able to service our customers and how how on the on the feet are we to kind of change uh, when there is a problem so i think a big opportunity for supply chain uh, uh, we will see a lot of good work being spoken about for people in supply chain uh, at least this year for sure it also gives us a space for us to look at uh, building some bit of uh, automation is a, is a very uh, far fetched word for uh, warehousing and a thing but how do i reduce a manpower intensity in the world so last mile you can manufacturing you can you can warehousing you can so a lot of places where you would want to build a uh, some level of reduced dependence on manpower uh, and be more quick with strategy so i think uh, of difficult times uh, we will see stifled growths uh, for most of our uh, what i would say discretionary spend uh, we had seen a, a very uh, low uh, sale for what we used to call out of home spend so a dio spray for that matter had a extremely low sale because nobody was going out of home for a period of time uh, and, and other discretionary spends would see something going down so a big churn in the spend you would see health segment going up in demand there will be other segments going down in demand uh, so yeah i think an opportunity for people in supply chain to really rise up to make themselves felt for the organization okay excellent so bharat coming to you again uh, again what is the thing which you really uh, like about your career and what is something which you really uh, hated about it again it's a slightly personal question but uh, it may really gel very well with a b school grad about what to expect when he or she is in the industry yeah so uh, i think i'll start with what i really like about it right uh, i think uh, over the last few years i have been part of many projects many stints where i've seen a, a literally a zero one sort of a scale up right in the entire operations or supply chain design i'll probably talk about the latest experience that i'm uh, currently a part of right i am run a pretty commerce business of landmark group and whatever we have done so far exactly last june june 2019 all of this were in a bunch of excels and presentation decks and now all of that has now sort of translated to uh, four sourcing countries one fulfillment country uh, saudi arabia and uae two countries uh, getting stock from china india to saudi arabia ensuring our customers get these orders delivered on time building this entire ecosystem right i think this entire zero to one sort of a journey uh, with obviously the Uh, right amount of hiring with the right amount of tech integrations and with the right amount of external partners has been really gratifying and i think um, this has been true in a uh, few of my previous stints as well so that's what i really like about it and yeah i mean uh, if i have to speak about what i really don't like about it i would have to say 
uh, fortunately or unfortunately, there's a 24-7 job and you are expected to be on always, right? Something and trust me, something will always go wrong. So if that goes wrong, you just need to ensure that you are a message or a call away. And that's, yeah, I mean, I think uh, your success in this role largely depends on how, uh, how much can you minimize these instances. But yeah, I think that's something that I've sort of. Uh, okay, very true, like. very true. So, Jerin, uh, if I have to ask you, uh, what is something which changed your career drastically? So, what is that? Hmm, okay, um, I think the uh, the single biggest thing was um, when I when I was given the opportunity to manage the project in uh, in the Philippines. So um, I think uh, the group and uh, Casey has been very kind to me in, in terms of the culture. There's a lot of trust that was required uh, to kind of uh, give give me a responsibility. And typically, project managers are you know uh, very experienced engineers, etc. And uh, they, this 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 kind of changed that perspective for me that I could deliver a project, and then that that uh, that was a key turning point for further opportunities that uh, that came my way. Okay, uh, Ashutosh, coming to you, uh, how does your typical work week look like? So if you can tell uh, our B-School grads, because they will have an idea of what they are expecting. Uh. Sure. Uh, so as Bharat was mentioning, right, and uh, Sharath also emphasized this, this is a live, real-time environment. So uh, there's no five-day week, six-day week. It could be a week where you possibly everything is sorted, uh, your projects are working fine, there's nothing going on. Uh, or so uh, you possibly have a 40 hour week it can happen and it might also happen that there's some critical projects which are under implementation and execution and you can have a 70 hour week also so it depends on that but for me uh, especially right now uh, uh, because of the covid ecosystem we were discussing it right now uh, because of covid pandemic a lot of changes in the supply chain has to be done and these were not planned in the overall annual operating plan because the overall ecosystem changed and the demand from the customer, uh, effectively safety became a huge concern. It wasn't that important in the e-commerce supply chain till then, but uh, you have to make these changes, make a lot of rollouts happen, attempt and do multiple experiments at a parallel time. And uh, hence it became uh, everything, it was, it was like all hands on tech kind of ecosystem at Misho specifically and on in my team. And looking into account that everybody's working from home, you can't have those closed door meetings and still you have to ensure that the productivity is, uh, is actually more than what it's usually in a BAU day. So uh, it's it's about team interactions, uh, working sessions with my team, uh, update statuses with my leadership, getting uh, all the sense of what actually happens in the market. I also try and uh, even to this day, I try and uh, listen to my customers, attempt to hear their real time calls, what exactly is their issue so that I am aware of what actually is happening in the market. So this is how typically my week looks like. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sharath, I think you have been very busy during these times because it's all about essential. So uh, do you find time for your near and dear ones or how is it? So uh, I've, I've been stuck in Delhi uh, for the last, uh, since March, but then I'm staying in Delhi for the last one year. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've been away from my family. That is true, uh, but I think the problem that you're solving is much more uh, interesting and uh, much more, you know, dear to your heart. That uh, I really don't uh, kind of uh, think that he can. Might be there'll be one day when I'll regret. Okay, I should have spent more time with the family. Yeah, I can see that. But then uh, when you're actually really taking it to your heart and solving something and seeing it fruitful, I think uh, you end up not thinking that way. And uh, if I have to give an advice to the IMK guys were joining the campus and for them is that we that you I don't, I don't know these are these are not the questions that you should have in mind okay, what's going to be my life what's going to be my work time what's going to make if, if the initial set if you just got off campus I, I think uh, you guys should not think about uh, work-life balance or I don't know what because I think the initial stages are the when you get to learn a lot uh, which will give you the bounce to go wherever you want to go right and, and the initial stages is where uh, and I would say that definitely that has helped me a lot it is not the struggles of uh, trying to run a star startup. I was very, very hard working in the initial stages, though I took a pay cut and I joined a company. I ensured that I put I worked my ass off there. So that is something that you should be. And then if you don't like the work, the work that you're doing, 
uh, then I think you should take a quick call to switch over it, right? And uh, I think that's what keeps everyone going. And uh, and and definitely the high that you get once you solve a problem, once you have a plan for a week and it gets done, and the numbers look green and not red, I think definitely Bharat, Ashutosh, Srikant, Jaren, everybody would agree that that gives a high, right? So yes, we did this week. The week was good. Yeah, we had a good time, right? So I think that small, small success are to be kind of enjoyed, small milestones that you do that keeps you going. And uh, that is what actually gives you a lot of enriching experience. I don't know whether I answered your question right or wrong, but then I, what I feel is that uh, definitely there is that you have to sacrifice something that no pay, no gain. You, you got to give something to get something. I think that it's a personal choice. Uh, if this is your priority, I think you'd be willing to do it. Okay. Fine. So we have some audience questions coming in. So first question which I have, I have is, how do you move to an international role? Any practical steps to follow? So maybe Jerin or Bharat, one of you can uh, take this. So any practical steps to follow if you are moving to an international role? Um, sure. Maybe I'll take this. Um, I think uh, a if you can sort of uh, be clear that you want to make this transition from whatever company or organization you are a part of to uh, a particular destination or a particular country, then go research, figure out, build a network, reach out to people, understand what skills are required and see how you can connect to them. Right. I mean, uh, what I have often seen, like even when I was sort of uh, trying to do this or looking at these options earlier was found that there was some or other K connection with many of our, uh, many of the country uh, companies that I wanted to sort of work with, right? I was surprised to find that I had a K connection even in uh, South Korea, right? Uh, so I uh, got to know that uh, last year when I was looking at some options. But I think uh, the fundamental uh, 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 the first step that I would encourage anyone to do is, yes, figure out where you want to go, which are the organizations, make a list of them, and then probably strategically approach them figure out who your mutual connects are. It could be anyone. I mean, uh, it could be K alum or your undergrad alum or any other network. And then figure out how you can sort of pitch in and add value and say that, you know what, my skill sets back from where I am from India, which, which is, by the way, a much demanded skill set, right? I mean, the Indian startup ecosystem is now all over the place. So any skill set, if you're part of that industry, is in high demand across the globe. Um, so I think I would, for, start, for starters, that's the first step that I would encourage everyone to do. Jerry, you want to add something? Or? Um, I, I, I uh, agree largely with what Bharat has said. I would also uh, I would also uh, encourage people to keep track of uh, interesting roles, probably on LinkedIn or any other uh, networking uh, means, and and uh, uh, specific uh, probably uh, probably think of the country second, and 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 look of the uh, look for the role first. At least when you're when you're much younger, uh, I think that 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 will probably give it a whole lot more richness. Especially if you are looking at an international state. Acha, now uh, we have a very interesting question uh, from Pavitra. Uh, she says that how does someone who has been away for four five years from the SCM space get back to it now? Any specific areas or skills to brush up? So any one of you can have it. So somebody who has been away from this space for four five years wants to come back. So what he or she needs to do? So any one of you can actually uh, take a shot at it. Okay, I'll take it up. So yeah, uh, so uh, we have a lot of people joining uh, our company up against various backgrounds. Uh, it's not that somebody is away from four five doesn't mean that they're not working. They might be working in a different other uh, field or different other role. Uh, but uh, basically, if at all you are kind of uh, very uh, serious about a particular uh, supply chain role in a particular company, right? I think uh, as Bharat said. Right. You need to connect with the concerned person or relevant people in the company and to understand what is their requirement, what are they looking at and what is that you need to get brushed up with. OK. And then uh, based upon that, you can kind of brush up certain skills that you want to. That would be the first thing. Apart from the definitely all the any 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 supply chain role will definitely need all those skill sets that we discussed earlier in this webinar. Uh, apart from that, anything specific which is really required, let's say a specific tool that they use in the company can be an added advantage to you, a specific uh, uh, say uh, uh, ERP that they use in a particular company, uh, knowledge about it, uh, actually uh, one thing than the other guys that are applying for the role. I think uh, you could build uh, specific advantages for those roles uh, rather than having a common formula. I think uh, 
and then kind of uh, target those uh, roles i think that way it would be much more uh, successful in kind of getting that role, bagging that role in the company okay uh, uh, we are actually running short of time uh, uh, we are very sorry we will not be able to take any more questions but uh, if you look at it uh, all of them are actually stalwarts in their field so you can always uh, look up at their profiles and just uh, have a look what they have done so before i close again i just uh, want to reemphasize i am koi code uh, it's a great place to launch a career in operation supply chain it was always there only thing is now because supply chain has become mainstream that's why we are talking about it uh, they have a very strong uh, faculty in the ops and sm area there are uh, some great elective subjects uh, which are being offered right now on campus uh, the omega which is a student student uh, interest group which is actually uh, facilitating some of the life projects and uh, if you look at it five of us this is just the tip of the iceberg uh, we have many more people we could not accommodate who have done really great in this space and again uh, we have great career opportunity we have amazon we have uh, the fmcg roles of course ninja cart again the hottest thing in the market today they come to campus in fact uh, the big four they offer positions in strategy and operations so we have whole lot of things happening in the supply chain area so only thing is uh, it was never known but we have always been doing this but now that it has become uh, mainstream uh, we see that fundamentals don't change uh, so it was a pleasure to have all five of you and really i thank uh, all of you for your time uh, uh, we are at 90 minutes and uh, hopefully uh, the audience had a great time interacting with uh, all of them and uh, Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.